Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Ben with Adjuster Pro. I just wanted to walk you through really quickly how to apply for licenses through NIPR. Uh, specifically the Alabama licenses. We'll go through the resident, the non-resident, and the non-resident designated home state licenses. They're all basically the same, but you have to start here at NIPR.com. So you can see it right up here on the top of my screen. And then Go ahead and click on Apply for License. It's this big button here. There's a ton of information on this page, but what you want is right here. It's got like a little diploma certificate that says Apply for License. And then the license type, you want to be specific. If you live in Alabama, you want the resident licensing. If you do not live in Alabama and you're applying for a non-resident, like a reciprocal license, which is what I would use, you don't do non-resident licensing. You do non-resident adjuster licensing. And then if you live in a state that doesn't license adjusters, like Tennessee or Ohio or something to that effect, then you're going to want the non-resident licensing no home state. But let's go ahead and do the resident licensing application so you can see what that looks like. Then I'll come back out and I'll go through the non-resident adjuster licensing so you can see what it looks like when you're using a reciprocal license. So first you're going to just click here. And then you get this page and sometimes this page confuses people because it has every state here. Now you have two big green buttons that say apply here but a lot of people miss that and they see Alabama. They get tunnel vision they click on Alabama. That's okay. Don't worry. If you get to this page because you're so excited, it's fine. Go ahead and just review some of the requirements here. And I don't know if you saw, there was a big green button that said apply at the beginning. There's also one down at the bottom. You can click right here. It shows you when it was last updated. And then, what type of license are you going to apply as? You're going to apply as an individual. You're going to sign in as an individual. Not a business. You're an individual. So go ahead and click on that. And then how do you want to sign in or how do you want to find your qualifications? Well, you probably don't have a license number. And if you don't have a license number, you probably don't have a national producer number. They call it an NPN. So you're going to want to use your social security number. You just type in your last name. I'll use mine. And then type in your social security number. No peeking. Go ahead and accept the user agreement and then click next and then it's going to enter in or ask you for your date of birth go ahead and put that in again no peeking I entered my date of birth in wrong had to fix it and you'll see next go ahead and click next and now if you've ever done this before like I have it's going to have this you can resume a previously started application but chances are you're just going to have this it's going to be your name and you just click this part here there will be some notifications up here like they're having trouble with massachusetts resident renewals for business entities right now but if you don't see anything that says alabama residents non-residents or designated home states you probably don't have to pay much attention to it go ahead and take a look at everything on this page first and then click your name to start I'm going to go ahead and start a licensing application. If you move, you would change your address, phone, or email this way. Now here's another thing that confuses people. People will click licensing because they just clicked it before. But you want adjuster licensing. And then what type of application? You want your initial application. Now once it's been two years, you might be doing a renewal. Or you might add a line of authority. Say you just did property and casualty, but then all of a sudden you decided, you know what, I really should have done the multi-lines course, the one that includes workers' compensation and crop insurance. You can come back in here and you can add a line of authority. And then what type of resi uh, residence are you? I'm, re I'm going to do the resident application, even though I'm a non-resident. But I want to show you something coming up here. Okay, what state do you want? So it seems you can do more than one state, but since we're doing a resident application, we're just going to do the one. If you were doing a non-resident application, then you could apply for reciprocal licenses using this. I'm not sure why they list states like North Dakota, Ohio, and Colorado, because those are non-licensing states. But it might be that you can apply for other insurance licenses like um, sales, a sales license, or a health insurance license. Anyways, we're going to select Alabama. If you make a mistake, just click the X. You can put it back there. And you can bring it, bring back what you want. And then the next button is down here on the bottom right. Go ahead and click Next. Now, here's where some people get confused. So, the lines of authority that you would like to apply for, for Alabama. You've got insurance producer, that's someone who sells insurance. Temporary producer, again, someone who sells insurance. Pre-need sales agent, I have no idea what that is. And then you have apprentice adjuster. If you see this, stop. 
because what this means is that they do not have anything on file saying that you passed the test. So it might be um, today is Thursday the 14th of June. If I had finished my Alabama final exam yesterday and then I came in to apply today, they're not going to have my test score because Adjuster Pro hasn't submitted it yet to the state. Well, we submit it to, I think, the University of Alabama, and then they submit it to the state. So it's like a three-party system, so it can take up to four or five business days before they actually get your stuff. If you get to this part where it says Apprentice Adjuster, and it doesn't list actual adjuster with lines of authority, stop, go ahead and get your fingerprints done. They'll hold on to your fingerprints for 30 days. I think it's 3M Cogent is where you get your fingerprints done, and in a couple of days come on back you can resume this saved application it should bring you right back here and then you will see a different set of licenses that are available let me go ahead and sign out of here and start a new application so now we're going to apply for the non-resident adjuster license this is going to be a reciprocal license since I already have my Florida license let me just close a couple of these tabs here I had to go through and delete some stuff because it wouldn't let me proceed since I'd already started the application yesterday for practice so what you're going to do is you're going to click apply for license just like you would for a resident license but down here you're going to click non-resident adjuster licensing because you already have your license here's the Alabama one but I can just click apply here accept the terms you can't apply without it and then you're gonna put in your last name now remember this is for people who already have their license we have switched over to the reciprocal licensing but I want to show you resident applicants a thing or two here what it should look like when you're ready to go so you're gonna click Alabama and then when you see this you can apply for the adjuster type you notice it does not say adjuster apprentice it just says adjuster and then the lines of authority can be any but you can only select one so if you want to be just a crop adjuster select crop if you want to be just workers comp select just workers comp this one here is property and casualty only see it says excluding workers comp and, cro and crop and then this one is the one that most of you will do if you took the 379 course th through adjuster pro that's the multi lines course it's the longest one the 40 hour course that is the property and casualty including workers compensation and crop course you cannot hold any of these licenses with any others well I guess it's these two can't be held together I guess you could hold this one with those two anyways go ahead and click next it's gonna tell you how much it's gonna cost it's hundred and sixteen dollars total It's hundred and ten for the license and IPR charges you six dollars and eighteen cents you have to pay it go ahead and just click yes and then you can fill out all of this information. I am going to pause it while I fill out this information for you. Hold on just a second. Okay, once you have all this information filled out, go ahead and just click Next. And then you're going to have to do it again for your business information. I'm going to pause it for just a second while I do that as well. Okay, one quick note about your business information. You're, you are going to have a business phone. The business phone number is whatever phone number you use for your normal day. Uh, if you have a dedicated business phone, like you got a cell phone just to be your adjuster licensing phone, use that. Otherwise, just use your regular cell phone. That's what I'm putting in. Your business email. Now, if you have a special email like wickedgoodadjuster at yahoo.com or whatever or a gmail you can use that otherwise just use the email where you would like your claims to go and how you would like the companies to contact you this is also going to be the email that all of your clients will have access to to contact you as well and you have to be pretty diligent about using the uh, responding to their emails and stuff so I would encourage you to create a business email if you don't have one already but if if you want you can always update that later and you can use your personal email your business address is just going to be your home address a lot of people get freaked out they're like I don't have a business set up that's okay as an independent adjuster you essentially work out of the home even though you're out and about adjusting claims all day but you just put your home address for your business address once you have all this stuff in here go ahead and click next it's going to double check your mailing address, which should be the same as your business address, which should be the same as your home address, unless you've entered other information. If you want to receive your mail at a P.O. box, that's totally fine. Go ahead and just check over all this information. Mine was auto-populated, and then click Next. 
now comes any aliases that you might use. So, for example, if you were Superman and you were filling out this application, you might have Steel as your last name, Man as your first name, and then Of would be your middle name. Something like that. But if you do business as, and that would be probably him doing business as, but he might be formally known as Kent Clark. You know, and that would be also uh, his formally known as that. Maybe formally known would be Superman. Uh, maybe this would be formally known, and this would be doing business as, because he works at the Daily Planet as Clark Kent, but he's formally known as the Man of Steel, but we all call him Superman. So that's how you would fill out your aliases. And go ahead. If you don't have any aliases, this is totally optional. Just don't enter anything, and if you need to add more, you can add more. And go ahead and click Next when you're done. And now this is Affiliations. List your insurance agent's affiliations. So if... Say you were contacted by Pilot, Worley, Renfro, or Ebrolls, and they said, oh, go get your license number, and we're going to hire you, then you might have a number here. If you don't have anything, just go ahead and click Next. Now they want your employment history. This is kind of a pain, because they want your employment history for the last five years. I don't know what this really has to do with you getting an adjuster's license, because you could be unemployed for five years, and you finally want to become an adjuster. So just put in whatever you need to. I'm going to pause it and just put in some, some silly stuff. Just a moment. Okay, so you'll want to be honest here and actually list your different jobs and things. List the major jobs. You know, if you worked for, I don't know, if you started a job for two weeks and then it, you got a different job, you just can't have any gaps. So and it, it, there's help here if you need to help, help filling out your employment history. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to put job in Springfield, Illinois, and that I started it in January 2005. And you have to have this set to whatever month. Right now it's June. Like if I set this to May, then it would not uh, let me go forward. So you have to have this set to June of whatever current, well, you know, the current month of the current year that you're in. And then I just put staff down. But this is just so I can show you more of what's going on. It's not actually my employment history. Now it's going to ask you all of the background questions. You know, have you been arrested or charged, convicted of a misdemeanor, have you been convicted of a felony? Be honest here. If you have anything on your background, um, it doesn't necessarily uh, exclude you from getting a license. But if you lie, you will definitely not get a license. Um, you have been convicted of a military offense? No. you ever been named? Uh, no. Most of these are going to be no. Has any demand been made or judgment rendered you against your business? Uh, these are all kind of like fraud and um, delinquency on taxes. Are you involved in a lawsuit for anything? you have a business in which you were that got in trouble with insurance stuff? Do you have child support, obligation? And if yes, uh, what, I don't even know what, what this means, but um, look it up. Do you have child support, obligation stuff? Uh, are you currently subject in compliance? Oh, this is all part of Section 7. And then if you responded yes to any of these background questions, are you... So, okay, so since you didn't, since I didn't click yes, I can't click any of those. Go ahead and click next. Review all of your information. Agree. Definitely review this. Don't just click agree like I did. You want to make sure that all of this is accurate. This is an important application. And then email addresses. If you have more than one, Go ahead and put it in there. So if you've got like a personal email and then you maybe have your business email, you know, wickedgoodadjuster at gmail.com, that would be a good place to put them. And then are you submitting this application yourself? That's already selected, but if, um, if English was your second language and someone was helping you with the questions, then they would have to put in their information as well. But if you're doing it yourself, just leave it. Go ahead and click Next. Now comes the fun part. Now comes the payment, $116.18. I think they only take credit cards and take Visa. Oh, I guess they can take an e-check. I don't know how you set that up, but if you wish to go through that, um, just click here, and then you'll set up all this information. Easiest thing is going to be a credit card. They even take PayPal, for those of you who love using PayPal. And then just put in your information, click Next, and you're done. So thanks for watching this video, everybody. Hopefully this will help you when applying for your licenses through NIPR. You can do more than just Alabama, but this one is geared towards resident Alabama licenses, and then at the end, the non-resident reciprocal licenses. If you have questions, feel free to give us a call at area code 
329-9030 and make sure to press 2 for support. If you press 1, that'll just get you to the sales guys and then they will just send you over to support to help you with your licensing application questions. Uh, do leave a message. If you don't leave a message, we won't be able to get back to you and we answer all messages in the order in which they come in. So the sooner you leave a message, the sooner you'll get called back. You can also email us at support at adjusterpro.com or if you want to try NIPR you, and you need assistance, you can always click up here. And then I believe down at the bottom they have a help and a contact us and even a phone number. For assistance you can call 855-674-6477. So anyways, I hope you found this video informative and if you have any questions just let us know. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.